Are you someone who's been trying hard as hell to get to the next level? Do you grind rank but still find yourself hard stuck plat 4 or diamond 4? Are you looking for ways to break those plateaus? If so, then this is the video for you. Last split on Olympus, I managed to solo queue to Masters. Even though ranked right now is kind of chalked, I started playing in Season 9 so I would consider that an accomplishment for myself. Even though it's easier for some, many others may not find it that way, so here are 6 tips to help you get to that next level. But before we get into it, if you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and leave a like on this video. Let's aim for 15 likes. And if you enjoy my content and you want to come back and see more, hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications that we get notified every time I upload a new video. And let's go ahead and get right into tip number one, which is be confident. I know this is really cliche, but I want to start off with something simple. I can't tell you how many times in the low ranks where I said we should push this fight, but people just didn't want to because they were too scared to lose our RP. And then when we got to those fights, they didn't have the confidence because they were already going into the fight thinking that we were going to lose. This can cause them to play sloppy, miss shots, make bad decisions, and ultimately throw the entire fight. This is exactly why you need to go into every single fight with the I'm going to shit on him mentality. And no, I don't mean that to be toxic, but honestly, just go in there thinking that you are better than them and that you are going to win this fight. I don't care how much damage you get, if you get an assist, if you don't get any kills, if you don't get any knocks, whatever. Just go in there with the mentality that you are going to win. For tip number two, Use your mic guys. I know some of you have social anxiety and you just don't want to talk to strangers or people online, but honestly, everyone is playing ranked for the same exact goal to rank up and to achieve the highest rank that they can. And I'm not going to lie, sure you might find a few assholes here and there, but honestly, if that's what you're worried about, just go into the games and just provide the most simple comms that you can. You don't need to go into the game to try to create a friendship or to just give up this long convoluted conversation. Just go in there with the mentality that you want to win. There is no problem with with creating a little small talk because maybe that can help increase the team's morale but if you're not comfortable in doing that just make the comms simple which leads us into point number three learn how to IGL or listen to comms for those of you who don't know what IGL is it means in-game leader if you're already skilled enough you have the mechanics the gunplay the IQ and the positioning try to IGL as many of your solo queue games as possible I'm not kidding when I say we played so much better whenever one of us was IGLing. Most of the time it was me because my team didn't feel confident doing so, so I would just take the lead. It also gives off the image as if you know what you're doing or that you're good enough for them to follow your lead. This will create a more cohesive team play and lead to winning way more fights. You guys will make better rotations, get better positioning, and overall just have a better ranked experience. And if you're not quite confident enough yet to shot call, just listen to comms. Not everyone who plays ranked can be the shot caller. Sometimes you'll have a full team of shot callers and sometimes you won't have anyone who's calling the shots at all, but someone on the team has got to do it which is why every professional team has their IGL. So if you're not confident enough to give the comms, which is totally okay, just trust in your IGL and then you'll be good. For tip number four, choose an optimal legend. Now I know this one is a little controversial, but the reality is that there's a reason why professional teams pick a very limited amount of the legends that we have available. Most legends just are not good for competitive play and that is totally fine. For me myself, I chose to run with Valk the entire time even though when I play pubs I normally don't play her. That's because Valk is just optimal for ranked play. Not that she's bad for pub games, but someone like Mirage is not near as good for ranked play as someone like Valkyrie, Gibby, Bloodhound, or even Wraith. So if you have the opportunity in your third pick and you notice that your team is missing a recon legend or maybe they're missing someone defensive or someone who's good at rotating then you probably should pick one of those unless you already have the just your ranked legend that you normally choose that fulfills one of those roles then you're totally fine but if you're solo queuing and you don't really have a main try to pick one of the legends that will fulfill one of those roles as they are incredibly crucial for team fights and really good for backing out of fights which is a perfect segue into the next point don't be afraid to back out of fights in many cases sometimes you get into a fight and you feel like you just have to commit to that fight even though you just don't. Reason why third parties happen many times is that the fight just takes too long. If fights take too long, you're giving teams a better opportunity while they're rotating to hear your gunshots and even just to look over there. If they notice it's just two teams, 
nine times out of 10, they're going to third party you. So in the instance where you are getting third party, it's just better to just try and back out of the fight if you can, which is why legends like Gibby and Valkyrie are so incredibly good for ranked. Other examples to back out of a fight would be if the team just has superior positioning on you or if your team is just running low on meds. Also, if one of your teammates get knocked, you just don't have to stay and fight. If you're fighting a losing battle and one of your teammates get knocked, sometimes it's just better to cut your losses and get out of there to try to preserve as much RP as possible. In many cases, you can hang by and try to get their banner afterwards and respawn them. Lastly, play for placement, but don't rat. In my TikTok, I get comments all the time where they think playing for placement and ratting are the same thing when they're just not. Playing for placement is more so about positioning well on the map. That way you're having a competitive advantage over many of the other teams in the lobby. This puts you in a better position to get more KP for teams trying to rotate onto you instead of you trying to rotate onto them, which happens quite frequently when you're just trying to rat for RP in placement. People who rat many times have really poor positioning they just rat anywhere they possibly can instead of trying to position somewhere that is advantageous on the map or maybe they'll just sit in a dark corner and hope no one sees them or a lot of times they'll try to get up and rat spots that people don't know about and just hide there and they will just refuse to fight players who position properly are generally going to be better at fighting and better at team fighting which will lead to more kp which as a result will increase your placement and give you more rp i'm not going to say that you can't hit high ranks by ratting as i've seen plenty of players who have hit masters ranks that have just ratted their way there but this rank system that we have right now is not going to be permanent and if that is how you're going to play it is not going to benefit you in the later and upcoming seasons the tips that i'm providing to you right now i believe can be applied to every single ranked season ahead right now ratting is a little bit beneficial but it's not good in the long term and i promise you that you will regret it but if you enjoyed today's video like I said, go ahead and smash that like button. Again, the goal is 15 likes. It also helps me out on the YouTube algorithm as it'll push it out to more people. If you want to come back for more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And again, turn on post notifications. That way you don't miss any of these uploads. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.